What's up, guys? Uh, here we are. Years later. Finally starting this damn thing. Uh, I made a video last time about this uh, Rev9 Turbo Kit that I installed, so I decided to make a video before I remove it for the Gretti uh, Twin Turbo Kit install, uh, along with a new engine. Uh, I figured I might answer some questions for some of you, so without further ado, let's go over it. So here's the kit as it sits. Uh, I guess we'll we'll go over this uh, starting from the bottom, okay? This is how it basically gets installed. So first things first. Over here. All right. She's dirty under here. Okay, so this is the pipe that will connect your two cylinders or uh, two banks of your motor together. And then it goes into this Y pipe here. Okay, so the hardest part about installing this kit is basically getting all of this piping right so that way when you run that Y pipe through here and then the up pipe for the for the turbo here you're not gonna have any clearance issues on the frame rail and you know, basically how the turbo inlet aligns with this hole here. Um, also, it will dictate your clearance. Can't really see it. Let's turn on the light, here we go. Uh, that will dictate your clearance for your downpipe between your strut tower and your downpipe. So as you can see, mine was basically kind of rubbing there. Um, at, some, at one point I even had plans to cut some of this out so that way you can clear it but luckily after playing around with the exhaust piping I didn't have to do that so that's honestly the hardest part let me go back under here um, another thing that I did I right, see the O2 sensor right there Uh, there it is. Um, I ended up putting a dimple on the firewall there where that, if I can, if I can get it, it's kind of hard to get it to focus, but basically I put a dimple in, in the firewall so that way the sensor can screw in and that wire wasn't kinked against the firewall. Um, here are the connectors for the rear O2s. I so just kind of had them chilling there. Um, what else did I have to do? Oh yeah, while I'm under here. Um, the way my kit ended up fitting, I ended up grinding away some over here on the subframe. Just excess metal. Um, and then just painted it looks like it held up pretty good but another thing I did as you can see here this is the dump tube for the wastegate I did not recirculate it reason being the pipe that when this thing was the other way around and the pipe that was going to the, where is it right there I got it blocked off it was a pipe that would go there to recirculate but it was causing the whole install the clearances and everything to be a pain in the butt so um, it's dumping just like that for the intercooler I just use some L brackets over here the intercooler comes with the threaded um, posts so it's nice it's actually a really nice intercooler for a cheap intercooler um, 
So that covers pretty much everything underneath, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's turn off the light here and let's go over the rest here. Um, for the oil cooler, I actually deleted the stock oil cooler, got rid of the lines and ended up buying this Rev9 oil cooler. I think it's a little overkill for this build, but whatever, I already got it. I'm just gonna continue running it. Um, and then to get that on, you basically use a HR oil filter stem and that will bolt that adapter to it. But I'm getting rid of that and I'm getting a, a thermostatic, or yeah, thermostatic, thermostatic um, adapter. So that way it cools the oil when it needs to. Uh, kind of had to grind away, you can kind of see it. Uh, I had to grind away at that uh, bend there because the wire or the the hoses were rubbing against the uh, radiator support. Um, speaking of radiator, I trimmed the heck out of it over here by the coupler so that way it would clear as well as over here. Um, it was a pain in the butt to get the fan shroud back in with the fans, uh, unless I grinded all those spots down. This is just the way this kit made everything come together. Um, there were some spots I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm like, instead of readjusting the whole damn thing over again, I just ended up grinding some plastics away, which is no big deal, right? Then, let's see, what else can we talk about? Uh, yeah, we talked about the exhaust piping, the wastegate. Um, for the oil line, oh yeah, let's, let's go back under there. I thought I was done. Let's put the light back on. All right, for the oil line, for the feed, I bought one of these beautiful 180 um, degree AN fitting. And instead of using the crappy one that they give you with the kit, I made my own. I, I always make my own lines. It's, it's, it's better that way. You can make them to length exactly how you want, lay them out exactly how you want. And I basically have it routed using a couple of the spare just holes on the block from um, the oil cooler that I used to run through here. I just use those holes to mount that with, uh, with these types of uh, clamps. And same thing for the return. Um, oh yeah, there's a few things I guess we can go over. I bought this. So for the return, it's like that. It goes around here into a Z1 oil pan space, spacer. And then I also bought a heat sleeve for the, uh, for the radiator feed for the coolant feed for the for the engine uh, and then what else did I do here I think that's about it right I think that's about covered covers everything there okay let's go back here turn off the light so once you get you know all your piping down and you can start running basically all the intercooler pipe the exhaust piping once you have the exhaust piping in place, you can start running the intercooler piping. And as long as you did everything right, everything will fall into place. Um, the kit does not come with the reducers from, I think it's, what is it? Three or two and a, three quarters to two and a half or something like that. Um, I called them and they did nothing for me. <laughs> so just so you know, you're gonna have to buy some uh, reducer. Uh, two adapters for the intercooler. Um, did I grind anything? Yeah, I think I ground some radiator support over here as well to make this pipe go nice and smooth through there. And then it just comes up, connects to the other piece, which is this 
guy right here, whoop, this guy, this whole piece is all one piece and it connects over here. Oh, jeez. There's a, yeah, there's a clamp right there. And then there's another piece that connects to the piece that connects to the intercooler. So, all together you have one, let's see, yeah, one, two, three, four. Four pipes all together. As far as like the intercooler piping goes. Then, You also should, um, since, what was it? I think that was, this is more for the Cosworth installation, but I had, to, I had to get rid of this line here that had the um, check valve. So the check valve ended up getting moved here for the brake booster. And then you can kind of see the wiring for the boost controller it goes through here and it goes all the way around through there and comes in through a grommet that I just basically just cut a little bit and just fed the wire through with some uh, with some grease. Um, the the boost reference, I think this is the one I believe, uh, goes straight through that same grommet where that wiring goes for the boost controller, and it goes into the ECU because the ECU has a. a uh, map sensor built into it. So uh, the other one, I believe it goes, yeah, the other one goes to the uh, boost gauge inside um, the car. And then I think the blow-up valve I had routed through, I teed off off of the fuel pressure like regulator. Get it? Yep, there it is. It's teed off over there. Uh, for the catch can in the video, I had a different one which basically was supposed to recirculate, but I wasn't thinking. And when I had it connected to here, I didn't use a check valve, so. Basically, the boost refer, you know, the boost and the crankcase pressure were fighting each other, and I believe that's what you know started the whole snowball effect for the engine to just start going to shit. I think it basically started out with the improper catch can setup because there's so much crankcase pressure until I fixed it, and then it stopped, and then it came back. So. I don't know, maybe if I've done that earlier, maybe this wouldn't have happened, but this engine also had eight owners prior to me, so I have no idea what the history is. And to be honest, when I bought that kit, I just I just sent it. I was like, screw it, let's put it on and run it and see what happens. Um, I had intentions of rebuilding the block anyways, because, I don't know, I just figured it'd be a fun little project. But... Yeah, that's how this one went out. Just a little too much boost and uh, just shitty crankcase ventilation off the start. Uh, but yeah, once you basically have the kit installed, you're obviously going to need injectors, a fuel pump, uh, boost controller. Uh, I mean, you don't need a boost controller, but it's nice to have. Um, that, I think that's a, that about covers it. What else can I, what else can I go over? Oh, the, the power steering uh, cooler has to get relocated from the front to over here. So you basically just cut some lines and relocate it there. That's just so you can put the inner cooler in place. Um, anything else I can go over? for this hmm nothing I can think of at the moment but yeah that's pretty much it in a nutshell you get what you pay for uh, just you're gonna need some you're gonna need some experience around the toolbox 
to properly install this thing because it is a pain in the butt but it was fun as hell all right so that's about it that covers it if there's any questions just you know hit me up on here whatever um, I'll try to my best to answer them and stay tuned as I uh, get this twin turbo kit installed all right take care guys